So thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation, Claude. And, uh, Dominic, uh, it's my honor to be here, to stand in front of you. I feel a little bit uh, afraid because I know that there are vast more experience in this room than, than I have. Uh, but I try to bring an example of the sport, the young sport, uh, on the on the Olympic program. I was very happy not to see triathlon images so far in any of the presentations uh, and in the video at the very beginning, but, uh, but as a sport, us, uh, we, we cannot be just uh, relaxed and, and, and just uh, not to do anything. For an international federation, it's, it's, a, it's a dilemma. Uh, and it's a dilemma mainly for, a, for an outdoor or mass participation sport because what we want as a sport, we want more participation, we want more fans, we want more iconic location because we can go anywhere in, in the city uh, with our sport. We want uh, to bring the, the action closer to our, to our fans, to the, the athletes and the fans to be as close as possible so they can feel what is happening. And whatever I mentioned brings more and more and more risk security issues. So there is this dilemma of, of as a federation we want to, to gain as much as we can from the, from the event, but at the same time it's, um, it's, uh, it's raising the risk. And it starts with the bidding for an international federation of, of just look at the, the map of the world and unfortunately uh, every day and, and where we can go and where we cannot go because if we go to a place where it's told it's safe but the athletes or the fans are not coming, then the event will happen as, as used to say, if a, if a tree falls in the, in, the, in the forest and no one's seen it, no one hear it, then it never happens. So we definitely we need to, to look at that. And of course, the, the, the effect which, which was mentioned and we, uh, a terrorist attack last year, uh, affected cancellations of also uh, triathlon events. Uh, there was a, the former president of the, of the IOC, when Anturio Samaraj said, because he was the president when triathlon became an Olympic sport in 94 and debuted in 2000, and said to our former president that triathlon is a very good sport, we like it very much, but it's, it's like a mini Olympics, it's, uh, it's really complicated, and, and of course we experience this uh, every day. So I'm trying to speak a little bit about uh, our, our situation as, as, as triathlon, uh, of what we are facing on, in our daily life and of course with our, with our major events. What we see that the general policies, and it's not just, uh, let's see, it's a major games and, and, and it's many sports and we are one of the, the many sports, or, or if we are working with, uh, with <coughs> security uh, companies or police, that every single policy is usually developed for an indoor sport, for a, for a usual setup of a stadium, of, a, of an indoor hall where people are coming in, going through security check, buying a ticket before the ticket, even now with the ticket, identifying themselves through the pros, that process, then going in, getting security checked, and, and then everyone is, uh, is safe. And I, I just brought, a, brought an example of a, Okay, this, is a, this is usually how it's, how it's developed, the field of play in the middle, then you have the accredited area around, as well as the ticketed area. I, I didn't, on purpose, I didn't bring a, a concrete example, I don't know where it is exactly, it's just a, it's just a map, and then around is the, is the public area, which is accessible to the manual. Opposite to this, our sport is, is a little bit different, and this is a, this is a map uh, from the Youth Olympics, which is a um, a multi-sport um, event, but not a, not a major, like not a not <coughs> game, but still, it shows uh, very well. And I'm trying to, yeah, this is the pointer that that in, in our in our case, the venue, the secure area, in this case, is this red line, which goes around and which has connection. Uh, this is the sea. And then, so this is, this is where everything is happening, this is where the facilities are, this is where the transition, the stuck area is here, so everything is within <coughs> a secure area. But, in our sport, after the, after the start, 
they go to an unsecured area, and then they come back through a fence. Of course, they cannot jump over a fence uh, while they are competing. And then they take the bike, and they, they go out again on the bike course, and then they leave the bike, and then they run, and they come in and out. So in our sport, that's a very unique situation that, that the athletes are going in and out of a secure uh, perimeter of the, of the venue. And it's not just, we are not, we just not need to deal with during the uh, competition phase, but also when there are trainings, when, when the athletes need to try to ride the course or try to swim the course. So, so we need to have many little small operations to be able to identify the athletes, to make sure that that is the athletes are, who are doing the training, not uh, not a group of uh, other people, and the adults or kids, or uh, coming through the venue without uh, without uh, any uh, any check. And this is this is the the, uh, the Olympics, and and what I said that that what we are trying to do with our sport is trying to bring our sport to the, to the best or to the most iconic places. This is Rio and this is the, the Copacabana Beach. And what we did here uh, last summer is that not just we brought our event to probably the most, uh, one of the most iconic places in, in Rio where thousands or hundreds of thousands of people coming every day just for fun, uh, but we are blocking a lot of things what can happen uh, on, on, on their, compared to their, compared to their daily life. We are using their, their swimming pool, the sea, what they are using every day, and of course we are blocking them for the most part of, uh, of, the, of the access uh, of the, of the, to the beach. On top of that, what we did last time is that, because, because we wanted to make sure that, that it's, a, it's a technically challenged course, then we, we put this, because this was a hill in and out, of the of the venue of the of the Atlantic Avenue, which made the, even the, the 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 traffic a little bit more difficult. So what uh, the mayor of Rio did that on we had two days, one Saturday and one Thursday, that the Thursday was declared as a public holiday uh, in Rio. So I think the people were happy at the end with the traffic because they had one extra day off uh, in in Rio. But but when I, when I said that that we have to secure, they are swimming out of the secure area and they have to come back and they are riding out and come back. We are going to places which are, which are full of people, which are full of, uh, uh, of public people. And, uh, and this is very, this is the difficult part of, uh, of what we have to do. And of course, if, if, I, if I go a little bit, uh, just very quickly on, on the different uh, part of the, of the scene, of course there is the, uh, the swim, which we will start, and this is a picture from the water towards the towards the, the shore in, in Rio, and you see how many people. So, what, how we can how we can make work, and how we can do this? Of course, we have to work, and we have to work according to operation plans. That that we have to make sure that we are not everything is happening according to a plan and according to according to a, a procedure which was set uh, beforehand. We have to look after our, our athletes to make sure that they are safe from the, from the health perspective, but also we have to make sure that they are safe from the security perspective. And on, of course, we as an international federation will not bring security guards or security people or security specialists to any of our events. We are relying on local police, on local uh, authorities. And of course, we also we don't have the right. So it's, it's very formal, but we have to make sure that the local authorities and the local uh, police, they understand what is the magnitude of the event and what is the risk of the event, and this is the technical aspect is what we are doing uh, to the sport. And then the bike, which is and the run, which goes on the street, which is, <coughs> of course, uh, going to, to places where it's full of people, as you can see, it's uh, lines of I don't know how many deep uh, in certain places, how many deep, uh, deep uh, of, of, of people. And of course, we, we need to rely on the, on the people again, the local authorities, the police, the local security personnel in the same way. And we have to bring our, we have to make sure that there are uh, experts which, are, which know what is happening uh, uh, with, the, with the event. We have the so-called the field of play marshals 
which are these people which are making sure that uh, the crossing points are operating. When I said that, that people are coming, thousands and thousands of people, we have to make sure one way or another they will cross the road. We just need to make sure that they are, they are crossing the road in the, in, the, in the right place. And the volunteers and the technical officials, just to make sure that we create this safe environment for the, uh, for the athletes. We need the equipment, we need fences, we need barricades, we need waterproof barricades, we need <coughs> all the cones, the caution tape, whatever level of the, of the events. And unfortunately, it's coming more and more what we see and what we hear from our organizers, that we need more and more concrete blocks. Uh, especially after these uh, these attacks uh, from the from uh, from the trucks, that uh, that even from from our events, we are seeing more and more that, uh, that this will come. And of course, uh, we need operation plans. The same way what we had on the, on the water, we have the same thing what we had on the we had on the street. We we need the, we need a plan for the accreditation, and this is again quite specific because it's not necessarily. Whatever is applied on the multi-sport games is applicable for such a venue. So we are having a little bit different accreditation <coughs> plan just to suit our sport. And if, it, if on the major games we are um, using some supplementary accreditations to make sure that, uh, that we can make sure that everyone knows uh, where they can go. But the accreditation goes, <coughs> once back, back, goes back with the visa, because this is again coming back as an international partnership to us that we had cases that uh, we had winter triathlon, which is a little part of our, of our sport uh, where we do cross-country skiing, running, and, and mountain biking, and we had applications from African countries. And then we asked them, do you know what is winter triathlon? And they had no, of course, they have not heard about winter triathlon. They just wanted to get the invitation letter for a visa. So this is, this is a, again, comes back to the International Federation before the accreditation happens that, that may very fine who is entitled to come and who is not entitled to come via the event. And then contingency planning. Um, it was really good uh, uh, last time for Rio that we had a lot of exercises before the games and, and many exercises was, were, were happening with the road events, uh, with the security uh, issues and, and with, all the, with all, the, all the issues which can happen around the, around the, the, the field of play security. And, and communication. When you have a venue like this, uh, it's, it's really necessary to have the communication running internally very well, and then to have a, the, the flow to the, to the police, to the medical, to the ambulance, to, to make sure that we have uh, that it running well. For this, for every event, this is again is just an example. We have an operation center, which is in, in parallel, which can, which is the local local law that maybe the, the, the police has to have their own operation center, but parallel to that, we have our own operation center where our technical people are sitting and representatives of the different stakeholders, the different groups, and, uh, and the communication is, is centralized through these operation centers. And based what, well, how, we can, how we can enforce it with our events, we have manuals, we have uh, uh, documentation, which has the organizers to, to, to make sure that uh, they don't need to to find out this uh, themselves. And of course, which is very important is, is we have the, uh, because if something goes wrong there, who pays the bill? Is that, uh, that, that is the liability question, and I'm sure that will be some, some more discussion, uh, the liability insurance, which needs to happen, of course, different level of liability uh, uh, for the different uh, definitely events. And of course, if everything goes, goes well, then this is what, this is the images we would like to see from our events, not the uh, images what we have seen in the past, uh, the, the, winning, the winning pictures of the athletes. I try to be as focused as possible on the subject, and uh, hopefully it was uh, useful from a small, little tiny sport which is uh, emerging, I hope, in the, in the Thank you very much.